If you're a history buff like me, then you might have a vested interest in old maps of the world, seeing how the maps improved, changed, developed, and were woefully inaccurate over the years. One of the very common artifacts to find in these maps is a phenomenon referred to as Phantom Islands. What are they exactly? Phantom Islands are simply lands that are proposed to exist and show up on maps but were later found out to either be non-existent, a different land, or simply stop being mentioned. In this video we will be looking at some of these Phantom Islands and the history behind them. We won't be looking at all of them just due to the sheer number that you can find and have existed, but we will be looking at four of the more commonly cited or well-known examples. The most famous example by far was the mystical island of Atlantis. I plan to do a more detailed episode about the history of Atlantis sometime in the future, so I won't be going into much detail here. Atlantis was first mentioned by Plato in the mid-3rd century BCE, stating how Athenians had defeated an invasion attempt by the people of Atlantis. Even during his time, scholars debated about whether or not the mythical island actually existed. Interest in this land was sparsely mentioned for well over a millennium, least from the surviving sources. It wasn't until the mid-17th century that interest in Atlantis became more common with the age of exploration being in full swing. It was suggested that Atlantis may have very well been the New World, or a large island in the middle of the Atlantic that sunk into the ocean among many other theories. The next island that we will be looking at is Antilia and her sister islands of Rolio and Santienzas. Antilia is first mentioned in an Iberian legend, where during the Muslim invasion in the early 8th century, seven Christian bishops, led by the Bishop of Porto, embarked with their Persian ships on ships and set sail westward into the Atlantic Ocean to flee the Arab conquerors. They stumbled upon an island and settled there, burning their ships to permanently sever their link to their now former homeland. The bishops erected seven settlements on the island. In one reading, the seven cities are listed as Ira, Antwab, Ansili, Ansilia, Ansoli, Ansoli, and Khan. You just had to mess with continuity, didn't you? When the Europeans rediscovered the Canary Islands in the 14th century, it revived an interest in Atlantic island myths. Old riddles and tales were scoring through, and many islands started to appear in charts and maps of the time. The Antillian island chain was first mentioned in 1367 by brothers Domenico and Francisco Pizzagoni, but only in name. It wasn't until 1424 that the islands were shown in a Portland chart by cousin Juan Pizzagoni. From that point, Antillia was shown in many maps until the latter end of the 16th century, with Rolio, who is referred to as Yamana, to the east or south of the island. To the north of Antillia was the island Satienzis, known as the Island of Devils or Hand of Satan. The reason for the connection to the devil is unknown, but Zwan inscribed the land in quote, This is the island called of the devils. The settlement on the islands include Ariayas, Cansalias, Dukel, Gimada, Nam, and Zugala, were added by Griazzo Benicaza four decades later. As the New World was explored more, the showings of Antilia were gradually reduced, with Santienzas ceasing and appearing almost immediately after the voyages of Christopher Columbus. Antilia itself was shrinking its size, and the tale of the mythical seven cities shifted to the American mainland. Some have suggested that Antilia was present-day Puerto Rico, or possibly even Trinidad, and the Caribbean is also named the Antilles due to this phantom island. The next island that we will be looking at is the Island of Brazil, which was also sometimes referred to as the Isle of Demons in some texts. The reason for the name Brasil is not 100% known. It is suggested that the name comes from the descendants of U Brasil Ayathir, an ancient Irish clan from Northern Arma. The island was believed to be populated by demons and wild beasts, which would torment and attack any ship that passed. It was also rumored to be visible only once every seven years, but impossible to reach. The island was shown as early as 1325 in a Portland chart by Anselino Doucet, being shown as almost always circular, with either a strait running through the center or a river going east to west. Two official expeditions were sent to try and land on the island, one in 1480 and another in the 1650s, both of which didn't give indication of the island's existence. The latter made mention of the island being inhabited by large black rabbits and a magician in a stone castle. However, this was something invented by Irish author Richard Hitt. The island was shown on many maps until 1865, until the lack of discovery took it officially off all maps. The last island that we will be looking at in this video is the island of Thule. 
Thule had been mentioned for well over a millennium in one way or another. It was first mentioned by Pethys Amasia, who was a Greek geographer and explorer. He was the first known visitor and reporter of the Arctic, of polar ice, and the Germanic tribes to the north. He introduced the idea of Thule near the end of the world, and his accounts of the tides is the oldest known to suggest the moon as their cause. He also was supposedly the first to have explored the British islands as well as Ireland, even though both were apparently known in the Greek world prior. Some writers at the time doubted Theus' claim on Thule, putting his entire British island journey into question. It seems to be from a disagreement as to the size of Britain, which Theus claims to have walked all on foot. No original sources exist, so what we know is simply from mentions from later historians and writers that make mention of his work. The Greek historian Strabo citing Theus' work makes mention of the people of Thule state in quote, The people of Thule live on helmet and other herbs, and on fruits and roots. And where there are grain and honey, the people get their beverage. Also from them, as from the grain, he says, Since they have no pure sunshine, they pound it out in large storehouses, after first gathering in the ears thither. For the threshing fours become useless because of this lack of sunshine and because of the rains. Roman poets and later writers make a claim that the population were Picts, as they donned the same blue paint of the Picts within Scotland. More than a half century later, Filney the Elder writes of Thule in his natural history text, staying in reference to the British islands, The furthest of all of which are all known and spoke of is Thule, in which there are no knights at all, as we have declared, about midsummer, namely within the sun passes through the sign Cancer, and counterize no days in midwinter, and each of these times they suppose do last six months all day or all night. From this point on, few questions the existence of an island north of Britain, but it wasn't for centuries after that it would be widely documented in maps or passages. Some rise of the time place Thule as somewhere north of Scythia while others in the later centuries make claim of Thule being to the north and west of Britannia. By the Middle Ages, Thule was largely used to denounce Iceland, where the Norwegians had settled at the turn of the 9th century. Maps by Greek Roman astronomer Ptolemy were being tested and scientists noticed a pattern of calculation mistakes when trying to convert the old coordinates from Platoni into modern geographical coordinates. After correcting for the mistakes, the scientist maps Ptolemy's Thule to the Norwegian island of Sulma while many other sources like Thule to the northwest of Britannia, likely citing Iceland or possibly even the Faroe Islands. However, neither of these locations fall within the Arctic Circle, where the midnight sun described by Thilny supposedly was seen, so the answer as to what Thule truly was may never be fully answered. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like me to cover another historical topic, say so in the comments below. Or if you'd like me to cover more Phantom Islands, say that as well in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll go ahead and catch you guys next time.